He'll stay in, you know. He's a good and he is. And her. They'll be good for the mess. We could do with some younger blood. I don't change much, you know. Different names, different faces. The spirits the same. They seem younger than we were. I suppose it's because we got our stripes in the war. Bill? Hmm. Yes, in the war. How long ago it all seems. Not only the war, but that day too in 1933, when we both joined the army. 22 years of service we've both had now, and 15 of them in the sergeant's mess. Funny how we both set our hearts on that. Although then, the mess meant to us just a building with a bar in it. Later, when Hitler's war began, we found out what it really meant. It certainly meant more than a building with a bar in it. In fact, quite often, we didn't have that. But the men were there, and the spirit, Cross and I were both corporals in 1939. His battalion was soon in the thick of it, and by the time of Dunkirk, he had earned his third strike. The news of that most tragic of victories reached us in the Middle East, where I too had just entered the mess. Through all the ups and downs of the Rommel campaigns, our battalion stayed in the desert. New faces appeared and became part of the pattern of our lives. But it wasn't until the great days of Alamey that we met our second battalion again. It was the day when our oldest NCO, Corporal Willie, finally got his third strike. By then, I was company sergeant major, and Sergeant Cross had become company quartermaster sergeant. After Alamein, the two battalions parted again. For me, the parting meant Italy and Anzio. No building with a bar in it here. Just the spirit that bound together these young men with old faces. And with the second battalion now out in sweaty Burma, the same strange story was developing. Men who joined the battalion to do a temporary job were finding in the sergeant's mess an extra something that made them want to stay on after the temporary job of winning the war was finished. After the war, a battalion of each infantry regiment was disbanded. We joined our old friends in Hong Kong in 1948 and became one battalion, the first. The fighting was over, but still the training had to continue. And still, some of the faces we knew were about us. Though Sergeant Willie had retired to a pub, which the Regimental Association had found for him in Kent. I was Regimental Sergeant Major, and my old friend Cross was Regimental Quartermaster Sergeant. But where were the sergeants of the future? We thought we knew where one of them was. We noticed him first as a keen young soldier in the Canal Zone in 1951, and had given him his first strike. By the time we entered the Myanmar campaign in Kenya in 1953-54, he was a full corporal. A regular soldier too, and we felt that one day, Corporal Brown would surely carry on the traditions of the sergeant's mess. Then they sent us back to England, and the battalion went into barracks at Dover. Corporal Brown, however, was posted to our depot at Canterbury to train intakes of new recruits. Good work. Look out, 
there's another one. What did you fire for? There was nothing there. You say, never mind what I said. There's no use firing if you can't see your target. You've only wounded him. Quick, the bandit. Blimey, what a ruddy mess. Take me hours to clean this. Look out, he's only wounded. Finish him off. Well, I've been through it once. Quick, he's got a grenade. Line. You'd have been dead by that time, and probably half the patrol with you. Orders must be obeyed immediately. You'll do the exercise again when I'm through with the others. Corporal, the CEO light at Sydney's office before lunch. How long will you be? About 20 minutes. Nip along then, wise man, get themselves cleaned up. Right. Trouble, Corporal? I don't know. Don't you worry, Corporal? We're on your side. <laughs> That's what worries me. One of our men from the battalion at Dover is coming to the depot on a compassionate posting. His mother lives here in Canterbury and she's seriously ill. You've been selected to go to the battalion in his place, Corporal. When, sir? Next week, when the present intake passes out. Why? Don't you like the idea? Well, naturally, I'd like to be with the battalion, sir, but, well... Yes? Well, we got engaged last week, sir, and Janie, that's my fiancée, I don't reckon she'll be too pleased. Engaged? How does your fiancée feel about the army? As a permanent career, I mean. We haven't discussed it much yet, sir, but I don't think she's too keen. She doesn't know much about it, really. And how do you feel? Oh, I like the army. I'll stay in if she's happy with it, but it's not much use if she doesn't like it, is it, sir? No. Why not invite her to the passing out parade next week, Corporal? Could I, sir? Of course. If she gets to know the army, who knows? Maybe she'd like it. Ask her along anyway. That's all. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I'd come up from Dover with my wife for the parade, and hearing about the problem of Corporal Brown's fiance, we decided to look out for her. Her name, we learned, was Janie Dalton. I found out within a few minutes of meeting her that she was not the type to just sit and listen to the band. She wanted to know what was going on and why. Ten weeks ago, these men had been raw recruits. I told Janie how many national service men look upon their service as drudgery. It isn't until they're well settled into the regiment that their attitude changes. Good instructors like Corporal Brown can ensure that even in these early weeks, a soldier acquires not only the knowledge of how to salute and how to fire a rifle, but the reason for discipline and the beginning of that team spirit which is the basis of all good units. the feeling of pride I had when I was given my first batch of recruits to turn into soldiers. That was something she understood, service to others, and a decent pride in something achieved. There was a touch of pride too in the way she watched a fiancé acting as right marker in the march past. 
but I hoped she wasn't expecting army life to be all bands and parades. My wife had taken a liking to the girl, and when Corporal Brown settled back into the battalion at Dover, we asked her down to visit us. Hello, Miss Dalton. Hello. Have you come to join up? Oh, I knew you were giving me sales talk at Canterbury. I didn't know that was the purpose. Well, it wasn't. Still, you made me realize I don't know anything about the army. And it's silly to have a prejudice against something you don't know anything about, isn't it? Why are you against us? <laughs> oh, I always believe everything I read in the papers. No, it's just that I wonder if it's the best career for Pete, the best life for us. He's all for it, of course, but he's never tried anything else. Will he get the same chances as he would in Civvy Street? You haven't heard his latest news? No. Pete! You never told me. It only happened yesterday. Aren't you excited? Excited? I know, I'm broke. Broke? I went to the sergeant's mess for the first time last night and had to buy everyone a drink. And there's 47 of them. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it a bit sudden making Pete a sergeant just now? He was due for it anyway, when he takes over the platoon and Sergeant Evans leaves. A vacancy occurred, so he's made up a little sooner, that's all. I told you about Sergeant Evans. He's going out of the army and getting a civvy job. We're giving a farewell party for him in the Sergeant's Mess next Saturday week. Why don't you bring her along? Oh, I'd love to come. <laughs> well, here's luck to you, but I think you'll regret it. Uh, not me, I'll be quids in. Well, cheers, anyway. Cheers. Cheers. Yes, good money. A flat somewhere in town. Time to do what I want. And nobody to tell me to get to the end of the earth if I don't want to. <laughs> hey, look who's here. Which appears the sappers are in. Where's this ruddy civilian? Phil, we, th we, we thought you were still in Kenya. Oh, I've just got back for a spot of leave before going off to Germany. I met your RSM and he asked me over. Oh, oh a real life sergeant. Congratulations. Thanks, Phil. Sergeant Bill Williams, my fiancée, Johnny Dalton. How do you do? Phil's with the engineers. We have to look after them in Kenya. We were just telling Sergeant Evans he's making a mistake in going out. What do your wife think about it? Well, it was her idea, really. I never thought it would be so difficult to find a flat. Having trouble? Well, it's all so expensive. A couple of rooms cost the earth, if you can find them. What's the job you're going to? Oh, factory work, assembly line stuff. Sounds dull to me. Sergeant Evans, there's a message from Brian Willie that he won't be able to make it. He's got flu. Oh. <laughs> he would have. He always got everything. Except promotion. The <laughs> oldest corporal in the army. That's what you used to call him. Took him 26 years to get to sergeant. Remember it? Just before Alamein. Yes, good day, sir. I like the desert. Ah, you can have it as far as I'm concerned. Give me Burma any time. Take Italy or Greece. Poor old Willie hated them all. Just couldn't stand mosquitoes and flies. Oh, I bet there isn't one within miles of his pub. <laughs> what a lovely thought, living in the middle of all that beer. Yeah, he'd probably fall in. Like the jeep. <laughs> Remember the driver's face? <laughs> Bridge builders, they call themselves. Well, come off it. It was your driver's fault. <laughs> there they go again. I'm going to miss all this. So's Jack. Tell me, you know what they're doing in the next? <laughs> and so the party continued. I saw Janie Dalton standing on her own and wondered what she'd expected to find in the sergeant's mess. And what was she feeling now as she caught odd bits of their conversation? I have an idea, though, that she too was finding that the sergeant's mess was more than just a building with a barn. A few days later, the battalion were informed that a vacancy existed for an NCO to attend the next course at Hyde. Since most of our senior NCOs had been there and Brown was available, it was decided to send him. On arrival, he was tested for his theoretical knowledge of weapons and for his practical handling of them. He soon found that the aims of the course were threefold. First, he had to improve his own performance with all the infantry weapons. But an NCO has to instruct as well as fight. And under the expert tuition of the small arms school staff, he began to learn how best to pass on his knowledge to others. Come up, boaters! Take the tack in!
The ultimate climax to training is, of course, battle. And in the third phase of the course, Brown was given practical opportunity to gain experience in leadership. Stand by. Okay. What would you do now? Well, um, I'd, uh... Well, they seem about to attack. I'd call for water players. Okay, do that. Water! Fight! While the army was training its NCOs, the tasks of the present still had to be performed. With our forces scattered all over the world, no unit could expect to stay long in the United Kingdom, and we were daily expecting news of our next move. Germany? That's great! What, another move? Can't we ever stay in one place? This will be the third school some of the children have been to this year. How do they expect the kids to get on? Yeah, they reckon the barracks are all right over there. What about my headquarters? Will there be enough to go round? Move, move, move. Why must we be the bunnies? Some units have been in the same place for donkey's years. 